we believe in evolution. And that is what our students are being subjected to throughout this country in the school system. They are being subjected to a belief system, not being taught the science. So let's look at the summary of our evidences. Evidence appears to support the Big Bang only when contradictions are ignored. The Big Bang model has been consistently changing to match the data. And the Big Bang model cannot explain much of the data we observe. So are the evidences used to support the Big Bang convincing enough to warrant a belief in billions of years? I don't believe so. The evidence clearly supports a younger universe. Let's take a look at the Big Bang in a nutshell. Kenneth C. Davis writes in his book, Don't Know Much About the Universe, 2001. And he says, in a nutshell, the Big Bang, or as some cosmologists prefer to call it, the standard model of cosmology goes something like this. About 15 billion years ago, the universe erupted from an enormous and still unexplained event, often referred to as a singularity from which all of space and matter were created. And he concludes, that's why you can't say it was an explosion. Nothing can't explode. And at the instant of the Big Bang, there was something. It's a little like a cosmic episode of Seinfeld, the show about nothing. It also didn't happen anywhere, that is, in a single location, but everywhere. So let's go to the last part now. The Bible and Big Bang cosmology. Can we fit the Big Bang into the Bible? Well, Dr. Danny Faulkner, again, PhD in astronomy, makes this statement. There are many today who interpret Genesis in terms of the latest scientific theories and even fads. If the history of science is any teacher, then we must conclude that many of these ideas eventually will be discarded. In other words, what we believe to be true about science one day turned out to be false the next. And then he concludes by saying this. If we have staked out a position that Genesis teaches these ideas, then what is to become of Genesis when these are abandoned? A great concern of mine is that many Christians have wedded the creation account of the Bible to the Big Bang Theory. What he's saying there is, if you're accepting the Big Bang and you're interpreting the Bible based on the Big Bang, what are you going to do when the Big Bang goes away and they come up with some other new model? You see, the Bible, we need to start our worldview with God's Word not man's fallible, changing word. Dr. John Bile, also has a PhD in astronomy, writes this in his book, God and Cosmos, A Christian View of Time, Space, and the Universe. And he says, First, Big Bang cosmology, even though it is currently by far the most popular cosmology, and even though it is presented as undoubtedly true, is beset with a number of serious observational and theoretical difficulties. And then Werner Gitt, PhD in physics, writes this. It is a great pity that many Christians are willing to reinterpret the infallible word of God to fit a fallible man-made theory like the Big Bang. Such ideas are ultimately devised to counter the biblical record, which is firmly against cosmic evolution over billions of years. And he concludes, those who urge trying to harmonize the Big Bang with scripture find it only natural to go on to other evolutionary ideas, such as a primitive earth, gradually cooling down, death and struggle, millions of years before the fall, and so on. That is exactly what we see happening in many mainline churches today. These churches that have gone off and compromised the foundation, Genesis, are now teaching many things such as, well, maybe there's no such thing as a virgin birth. Maybe Jesus really didn't die on the cross. There's many ways to get to heaven. You see, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? God warned us. He told us we have to hold on to our foundation. But what we see across this country is those churches that have compromised Genesis have now compromised the very gospel of Jesus Christ. But you know, there are many, many scientists out there today that reject the Big Bang. There are many, many scientists in every area of science today that believe exactly what the Bible teaches. That in the beginning, God created. He did it in six literal days, only about six to 7,000 years ago. Why do they believe that? For two reasons. One, that is exactly what the Bible teaches. And secondly, they can support it scientifically. 
What does the Bible have to say about time? The Bible says a lot about time. There are at least 12 biblical evidences that teach that the days of creation were literal days. There's nothing in the Bible that says this earth is billions of years old. There's nothing in the Bible that says these days of creation were long and definite periods of time. We have the day with a number, evening and morning. The days are actually defined in Genesis. In Exodus 20, verse 11, God writes down himself on the stone tablets, the Ten Commandments, for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth to see and all that is in them. He wrote it down that he created everything in six days. At least 12 biblical evidences that these days of creation were literal days. And what does that suggest? That this earth and this universe are not that old. Also in the Bible, 17 places in the Bible, it states that God stretched the heavens. 17 times it declares that God just stretched the heavens out. Now what that means, I don't know since I wasn't there, but it must be something significant. God could have just taken everything and stretched it out. And maybe that's why we're seeing many things redshifted. 17 places. We also have to understand and remember we have a God of miracles. We have a God that can do all these miracles. God created trees mature with fruit. God created mature animals. God created Adam and Eve fully mature. They didn't have to grow from babies. Jesus fed the 5,000 from a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. Jesus turned water into wine instantly. Jesus withered the fig tree instantly in Matthew 21. We had the instant learning of language at the Tower of Babel. Instant healing of the soldier's ear in the garden. And we have a God who said his creation was very good. We have a God of miracles. We have a God who can do all this. Jeremiah 32, 17 tells us we have a God that can do all this. Our Lord God, behold, thou had created the heaven and the earth by thy great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for thee. The question is, is that the God we worship? Or do we need to bring God down to our level of understanding in science? In other words, once we begin bringing God down to what we understand about science, we begin creating God in our image. And that is called idolatry. So what have we seen about the pattern of evolution? We've seen not reporting all the evidence, consistently updating the Big Bang model to to match the observed data, disagreement among the astronomers, a complete disregard for biblical interpretation, And then the new tactic is appeal to churches to accept real sciences. You can have evolution and have your religion. You can have evolution and have the Bible. No, you can't. You can have evolution and have your religion because religions are man-made things. But you cannot have evolution in the Bible because the Bible is not a man-made religion. The Bible comes from God, the creator of all things. And he said, he spoke it into existence by his great power. So, some critical thinking here. Which is easier to believe? Nothing created something called the universe, or God used evolution, or in the beginning, God created. But you know, the Bible teaches why so many choose to believe nothing created something, or why many believe in theistic evolution. It says right in 2 Timothy 4, 3, and 4 why so many people choose not to believe God's word. Where it says, For the time will come, will they not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And folks, those fables today come in something called evolution. That's why so many people believe it. Because God warned us that we're willing to listen to anything other than the word of God. Even to the point of compromising God's word called theistic evolution. And then finally there's some questions from scientists. A Los Alamos paper written in 2002 made these statements. Moreover, there are some questions that scientists still do not know how to ask, let alone answer scientifically. And these questions are these. Was there anything before the Big Bang? Is there a role for life in the cosmos? Why is there something rather than nothing? 
Will we ever know? Those are questions they can't answer scientifically. But folks, if you go to the Word of God, you'll have your answers. The creation by God gives meaning to the universe. We are created in the image and likeness of God. And we have a God that so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that we would listen to him and we would accept him as Lord and Savior. And we have a God who says, it does not matter what you've done because his grace and mercy can cover everything. That is the God we're talking about. The Bible answers all these questions. The question for you is, which do you choose to believe?